at 20, or in my appointment, about the time I get sat down and get offered, hopefully get offered a cup of tea, there's a brilliant show comes on, it's called The One Show. Has, everyone, has anyone seen it? Yeah. I see it virtually every night. <laughs> um, but if The One Show is one of them segment shows where you get three minutes of total junk, followed by three minutes of more junk, followed by three minutes of more junk. And if that catches one of them, I kind of lose, in, they lose I lose my place and I lose my pitch and I can't keep them. So what can I do to the TV? How do I get it off? That's exactly right, yeah. Absolutely. I'll just borrow this chair and I'll show you exactly what I do. Now this doesn't work every time, but if you leave the TV on, one of them will get interested in the TV. And if they get interested in the TV, you've lost your pitch. So in one movement, I go, uh, well, do you mind if I turn the TV off? <laughs> it's done. Before they can answer. Before they can answer, yeah, it's done. It doesn't work every time. And sometimes the blue screen Metallica DVD comes on, blasting out of the stereo, and it's horrific. So please don't say, Ma, that didn't work. So <coughs> sometimes it doesn't work. But if, if you don't get the TV off, you run the risk of them getting distracted. And you want their attention for about an hour, hour 15, to do the deal. So, now we're into introduction, we're in Dad's chair, I've got my briefcase by me, they're sat on the sofa, now d they might not have sat on the sofa for, for the together for 20 years, <laughs> so you've got a great, it's a bit uncomfortable here, so we've got to start asking a few questions, but how do we introduce the deal to start with, how do we get into it? Do what? Shout it out. What do they want to ask? What do they want to ask? We're going to start asking some questions, but what? right at the beginning, I have to ask permission to ask the questions. Because if I say, well, I want to talk about your house, how much do you own the house, what do I get back? Okay. Exactly right. It's none of your business, Matt. Just buy the house. Your advert said you'll, you'll buy my house in five days at full market value. Uh, so buy my house at full market value within five days and get out. So if, but if I ask permission, and I've said the same thing in every single house, at this point, Mum and Dad, I've got no idea whether we can do any business. No idea. But do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions first? Does anybody ever say no? Not really. Never. So if, I was, if I've asked permission to ask the questions, how many can I ask? As many as I like, yeah. And how many am I going to ask? Many as, it as many as it takes. So let's say, in fact, can you guys help me? Can you guys shout out some questions that you might ask a vendor about their circumstances, their finances, or their property? Why are you selling? Why are you selling? Brilliant one. How long have you lived there? How long have you lived there? Fantastic. Do you own the house? Do you own the house? Yes. Good one. What are the neighbours like? <laughs> neighbors like? Absolutely right. Yeah. Another one. Have you got a mortgage? That brilliant one, yes. Any other loans? Any other loans in the house? Will they know? No. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Will they know the outstanding balances? Probably not. Some, very often not, no. Other questions? What's the dinner? <laughs> <laughs> That's my Sunday question. <laughs> <laughs> Another one? Redemption figures. Redemption figures, absolutely right. Do they know? No. Very often not, they don't know. So what I do, I've got a, a little clipboard and I've got, on that clipboard, I've got a property inspection form. Because at some point, I'm going to walk around and have a look at the property. What I'm trying to do is, is, is dig out them pieces of paper, because I don't know how you guys do it, but what I do is for every single property I've got, and every single loan I've got, and every single credit card, and every single bit of finance I've got, I've got files for everything. And they're all, we've got a little room called, we call the library, and it's all set in there in little filing cabinets, or, or bookshelves, sorry. Vendors don't do that. They c seem to get their paperwork in kitchen drawers and in magazine racks and in shoeboxes under the bed. <laughs> the, uh, and it's, it's I, I, I can't understand how they do it and why they get into such a mess, but it's, it seems to be because the paperwork's all over the house. So walking around the house, I can ask the paper, I need those paperwork, I need those statements, I need the mortgage statement, I need the loans, I need the credit cards, I need the Littlewoods catalogue bill, which is sometimes under the sofa. If a chap's got a little pen, you know the little short pens that you see, little blue ones? He's a gambler. Betting shop. A bet, it's a betting shop pen. He's a gambler. He will have debts elsewhere. 
I can't ask him about his debts while his wife's in because he might not have told her. So I've got to wait till she makes a cup of tea, hopefully, and then I can ask him about his gambling debts because he will have them if he's got a little blue pen. So we've got to walk around the house getting all this stuff because will I believe anything they say? Not at all. And, and it's not because anyone's a nasty person and they don't lie on purpose, it's because they don't know. And people want to give you an answer. So if someone says to me, um, and I might notice the car when we walk up the drive to knock on the door, it's a 10 year old Astra. I say, well, are you behind any payments on any, any of your stuff? Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a couple of months behind on the car. How much is that in reality? Six months. It could be six months, yeah. How, how would you broach with him It's, uh, it's a little bit delicate to be fair, but I'm a cheeky, I'm cheeky, so I'll just ask outright, yeah. <laughs> I know it's a little blue pen, I see the little blue pens when people are down the bookies all the time, do you play cards? <laughs> what do you play, do you play Texas Oldham? No, uh, internet, oh, you, or your card chat, do you do it on a Friday night when they're all drunk? And I know if he doesn't play poker on a Friday night when they're all drunk on the internet, he's a he, he loses. Because the pros play on a Friday night when everyone comes in from the pub, thinks they can win a bit, and then... They're the ones that lose. I'm giving you secrets away here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn. So, we've asked all these questions. What I did was, um, in a hat. <laughs> That's an added bonus. I'll charge for that. A, I've lost my train of thought now, totally. Right. What I see is new people, and they've just been on a course. We're in a house, and I'll just listen to them and what they say. And, and they'll ask loads of questions, but they'll run out after about a dozen, 14 questions. And then there's this uncomfortable silence in the house. <coughs> what do you think happens then after the uncomfortable silence? Go for it. Well, they want to they do a deal. So how much are you going to give me for my house then? And do we want to start talking numbers at this point? No, I want to say it right from the very end. So what we did was we put together, a group of us put together 75 questions you can ask a vendor about there circumstances, finances, uh, or situation. And if you, you don't have to ask them all, they're not scripted, but if you ask the, the relevant ones, and you can keep them with you in the house, because I quite often do, because do I care if they think I'm a bit of a dummy for two hours? Not at all. And sometimes I do say, uh, um, I, I'm a bit new at this, I've just got a load of questions I have to ask, do you mind? Do they ever say no? Nah. So just read them off. Ooh. All this. And once you've got all the information from those questions, can you then make a decision if you want the property or not? Should be able to, yeah, absolutely right. So then we're going to match. Oh, we switch the TV off. We're going to match, which is whatever product you do, and I only do two products. I either offer a uh, below market value offer, which is a straight sale, or a lease option deal. Only, only do two, two different things, but I only buy a certain type of house, I only buy two and three bed terraces. So I go on to match. And then how do I close up the deal? Commit them the offer. I've, I've done that, we've made an offer, we've agreed. How do I get it? How do I, how do I seal it? It's nailed down and done. Option agreement. Option agreement, yes. What do I do with it? Absolutely right. What do I do with it? Sign. Get them to sign it. How do I get them to sign it? With the baton pen. With the what? <laughs> <laughs> with the, absolutely, absolutely right, yeah, with the pen. Lots of people write lots of magical stuff about closing deals, and I do this every single time. Well, I just hold up my option agreement, hold up my pen in mid-air, and say, would you mind signing this, please? That's all I do. There's no fancy tricks, there's no uh, magical twist up your arm closes, and even if you get an awkward one, or someone that knows what's, what's coming, would you mind signing that? They always take the pen. <laughs> every time. Even if you get a really awkward one, He's got, got his own pen. <laughs> Even if you get an awkward one, they still do it. People just naturally take the pen. He's got his own pen, but he's taking his contract. There are no tricks to closing up a deal. It's really, really, really dead simple. Should I speak when I'm holding my pen and my contract in mid-air waiting for them to sign? How long must I keep my mouth shut for? As long as it takes. I'm the only one in that room that feels any pressure. Because I want the deal. Sometimes I'm desperate for the deal, my legs are shaking, but they can't see it because it's under my trousers. <laughs> but I want the deal, but I'm holding steady. And the, the retailers have known this for years and years and years. 
Um, if the guys go into a, into a, um, a jean shop and buy a, buy a slightly posher pair of jeans than they normally would, and the retailer's been trained, what he'll do is he'll, he'll eye you up as you're looking at your rows of jeans, and he'll say, oh, it's about a size, it was about a waist 32, no, it's a 34. He'll go up and he'll, he'll take the jeans off the rack, off the shelf, and then he'll hold them up next to you. What happens if you take the jeans? pretty much bought them. And the retailers have been doing it for years and years and years, the good ones have been doing it for years. So all we do is hold the pen, hold the paper up, ask them to sign it. Now what I hear from, especially from people that have just done this, they're just in the house, of course when we put it signed up we can't smile until we get out of the estate. <laughs> but do not start smirking in the house, for goodness sake. <laughs> smile when you get out of the estate. So, lots of deals ha that happen, that they've signed up, and sometimes when we trade deals, we'll sell them on to another investor or, or another client. But they f I hear so often that they fall out of bed. Why do they fall out of bed? Uh, buyer's remorse. It's actually, yeah, actually buyer's remorse. Yeah. What is buyer's remorse? What actually happened? What's the physical stuff of buyer's remorse? Why does it fall out of bed? Sorry, shout out. Absolutely right, yeah, absolutely. You know we've all got our mate Fred that we speak to after we've done something big and is our mate Fred positive or negative? negative. Our mate Fred sucks the air through his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, you shouldn't have done that. And of course two days later they won't answer the phone, they won't answer the text messages, they won't reply to their emails, the deal's actually fallen over. So how do we stop that? Well, make them real happy, hopefully, hopefully, yes, that's it, right, but there's some steps, some dead simple steps. Making yourself available to answer questions. Yes, uh, well, absolutely, yes, absolutely right, it's, it's absolutely right, there. it's communication about what's going to happen next. So mum and dad, what I'm going to do, what's going to happen now, when I leave the house, is a valuer is going to appear in about two to three days. What I'll do is I'll come to the house with the valuer and do the tour around the house. Can, if, you, if you're out, just give us a key, or leave the key under the mat or under a pot, I'll get the valuer in and we'll go around the house and value the property. About a week to a week and a half after that, um, the lawyer is going to send an exchange contract out, or a lease option contract, depending on what type of deal you've done. This is what it looks like. Because some people, if, you, if you're doing with someone in their early 20s, it might be the first house sale they've ever done. And uh, in my early 20s, I, I would have been really scared, because uh, everyone's seen an, an option contract, haven't they? I should have brought one with me, to be fair. But there are quite scary things on lawyers' headed paper with lots of signatures and post-it notes and stuff on. But if you show someone, if you show a vendor what it looks like, then so what, what I'll do in a week's time when it arrives, um, I'll pop down, I'll help you sign it up and we'll get it done. And then you're communicating with your vendor and you keep the deal in bed, whether you're keeping the deal or whether you're trading the deal, it stays in bed. And your deals won't fall over.